Sports Animation. Every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday at 6 p.m. Hello, Pastor. You asked to speak to me. Yes, my daughter. I'd like to tell you something about yourself that maybe you don't know. I never thought I'd say it, but it comes to me every time I see you. Tell me, man of God. Okay. Do you know that you have a crown on your head? A crown on my head, how pasteur. But I've got nothing on my head. Look for yourself at my head. What I'm talking about is spiritual, girl. You're not just anybody. You're a great lady. You are crowned with greatness and success. Wherever you go, you'll be the first and the best. You have a brilliant destiny. Thank you, Pastor, for this prophecy. This is the third time I've received this prophecy. I didn't believe it. But as you've just said now, I'm going to become aware. You must believe, my daughter. Trust in God. Well, I'll leave you, my daughter. I've got a lesson to give straight away. Thank you very much, Pastor. Hello, my best friend, Grace. Hello, Chantou. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. I hope you're well and that you had a good weekend. Yes, I'm fine. My weekend was perfect as usual. How about yourself? This weekend I went to my aunt's. Anyway, I had a great time with my cousins. I didn't even want to leave them. If it wasn't for our specialty class this morning, I wouldn't even be going home. All right then. That's fine then. I hope you're studying slowly too. The exam is only a few days away. Yes, you know I'm not kidding about my studies. But you still haven't told me how you spent your weekend. I didn't do much except study and go to worship. You never seem to tire of your house. There's something I forgot to tell you about my girlfriend. Tell me. I hope this time it will be interesting. Do you remember when I mentioned meeting a man last time that prophesied something to me? Yes. Pastor George had given me the same prophecy yesterday after the service. And again, that's good then. You're lucky. You're also lucky, my friend. If I'm blessed, so are you. I'll share my success with you. Don't worry, Shantu. If you say so. Hello, class. I hope you're all well. Today I'm going to give you your assessment papers. But the marks aren't good. You didn't do a damn thing this assignment. I hope you'll make up for it later. Which of you is Grace? It's me, sir. Wow, I didn't know it was you. Congratulations, keep up the good work. You're a very smart girl. Your copy was a delight for me. I was really proud to have the best student in the school in my class. Keep up the good work, and in a few years' time you'll be a force to be reckoned with. I urge the whole class to get close to Grace and take a look at her copy. You can use this as an answer key. Happy arrival, my darling girl. How was your day? It's okay, Mom. I'll go to my room. You don't even tell me about your day, and you want to go straight to your room. I'm not in the mood, Mom. What have you got, my darling girl? I have nothing. How can you be in a bad mood and tell me you've got nothing? Calm down. I know the stress of your studies is enormous. That's the way medicine is. You'll finish soon and you'll be a great doctor for me. I'm very blessed to have you as my child. I made your favorite. Go get changed and come eat. I'm not hungry, Mom. What's wrong with that girl? Why are you crying? Please tell me the truth. You know yourself that you're my only pride. Mom, my grades at school aren't good at all this year. I'd hate to lose a year. My God, are exams that hard for you or what's wrong? 
I don't even know what's going on, Mom. Is that the case with your girlfriend, too? No, Mom, the other one always has the best grade in our class. She's so bright, Mom. I don't know why I'm not as lucky as she is. But I put in more effort than she does. But how is it that you always work together but your grades are so far apart? I couldn't say, Mom. She's just a special girl. Wherever we go together, people always notice her. She's always lucky, next to her I don't even exist. That's not normal, my girl. But don't worry, Mom, I'm going to redouble my efforts. In any case, I'm proud of my girlfriend, and I sometimes take advantage of her grace too. I'm her best friend. Thanks to her, I was able to find a good-paying internship last year. How did you get your internship thanks to her? When we went to submit our applications, the lady who was interviewing us said she only wanted one person, and that she wanted Grace. But Grace refused to stay on her own without me and rejected the lady's proposal. So she was obliged to take me too. Otherwise our other comrades weren't so lucky. They weren't even paid for the month where they were, and they weren't in a good hospital like me and Grace. Don't you see you're missing the point, my girl? Can't you see that she's the one keeping your star from shining? But why do you think so, Mom? How can she keep my star from shining? She's not God, Mom. You're still naive, my daughter. People are capable of covering up other people's stars or ripping them out for themselves. Incredible, I had no idea. She's always been better than me and every time she receives prophecies of greatness, you're told she'll always be the best wherever she is. That's what I've been telling you, girl. You've just confirmed it yourself. These prophecies are often accompanied by rituals or sacrifices that have an effect on others. What are you talking about, Mom? You need to get as far away from this girl as possible. Stop it, Mom. How can I stay away from my best friend? It's not just Mom. If you can't do it, I'll do it for you. You have to leave under her shadow. You're a smart girl, too. By staying with her all the time, you see your grades. Yet you've had almost the same performances since you were smaller. I remember when you were still in high school, you used to argue with each other about first place. Why is it now that she's getting so much better than you that you can't even keep up? Don't you see how weird this is? Don't trust her. It's true that I find what's happening a bit odd myself, but don't worry mom, I'm going to get down to work. We need to find a solution quickly. Chantal, lately I've been finding you a bit strange. You don't call me as much as you used to and you go home alone at the end of class. Have I done something wrong to you? No, you didn't. That's the way time is. Okay, I'm relieved now. Can I spend the afternoon at your place before going home? Yes, you can come, but you'd have to get home before my mother arrives. Why do I have to go home before your mother arrives? Your mother's no stranger to me. Besides, I saw her a while ago. So there's no way I'm going home without saying hello. All right, you can come home whenever you like. It was just a proposition I was making. I'm in. We'll have to work on the anatomy topo together this week. If we have time. In any case, I am thrilled that you finally have your notes. Happy arrival, Mom, but you weren't supposed to come home early today. Happy arrival, Mom. Thank you, daughter. How are you? I'm fine, Mom. I hope you are too. It's been a while since I've seen you. I'm well too. I'll let you two talk. I even want to go home already, Madame Sarah. I was just hoping you'd come to say hello. As you're back so quickly, I won't be long. I see. That's very kind of you. Let me make you a little sandwich before you go. Okay, Mom. I really missed your sandwiches. I'm going to enjoy them. Okay. Just give me two minutes. What help can I provide for the girl at this point? It continues to smother my daughter, preventing her from shining. Now I know what to do. I'll give her a spiritual poison. The doctors will never be able to detect it even if she goes to hospital. Take it, eat it, my daughter. Okay, mom. And for Chantal, mama. She's allergic to meat. She prefers fish sandwiches. That's right. I don't like meat. You can eat alone. But it's not right what you do sometimes, mom. Did you make that sandwich to punish me? I didn't have any fish, 
So what do you want me to do? I just made a little for my breakfast, and I've just served the rest to your friend. Tomorrow I'll have some fish for your preference. Okay, Mom. Well, goodbye, Chantal, and thank you very much, Mom. Doctor, how is my daughter doing? Take a seat, madam. Your daughter is showing all the symptoms of slow poisoning. But we can't detect the type of poison she's been given. My daughter poisoned, but she didn't even have a stomach ache. She was just feverish. I thought it was the beginning of malaria. No, it was definitely poisoning. She's getting worse every day. If we can't quickly determine the type of poison she had taken, the worst may happen. And it will be sudden death because we can't even be sure of the speed of the poison's activity. She could drop us at any moment. Hey Lord, who could have done this to me? My only daughter, my only hope of living. What am I going to do? Calm down ma'am, we'll do what we can to avoid death. Do everything you can doctor, so that she can recover in three days at most. She has a final training exam starting in three days. No, that's not possible madam. Even if she recovers before the exam, she won't be able to compose, and I doubt very much if she'll still have all her knowledge in place, because her brain is affected. My God. Can I see her? No, it won't be possible to see her today. She's just been transferred to surgery. But what's going on? The exam is only a few hours away and yet Grace still hasn't shown up. I hope she doesn't lose this year, it will be very serious for her. Thank you, Lord. My daughter has finally woken up. You never fail, Lord, even in difficult battles when all hope is lost. You come through with radiant victory. You are greater than they say. You are wonderful, my God. What am I doing here, Mom? You've been spiritually poisoned. You've just woken up from a coma of almost five months. And my exam, am I admitted? You couldn't even compose. There were three days left to compose when you entered your comatose state. Oh dear. I'm top of my class. I didn't even get to graduate. And my best friend, I hope she finished well? Yes. She was first in her class and had performed brilliantly. Thank God for that. I knew she was going to make it. She even came to, presented his diploma while you were still unconscious. She'd kept the promise we made to each other. I'm very happy for her. Her mother will be so proud of her. Good, I couldn't honor you. I hope you're not angry with me. Never in a million years. Seeing you alive surpasses all his diplomas. You have a heart of gold and I know God will restore you. I know God has another plan for you that's different from medicine. I have faith. I feel good now. I can finish the last year in support. I can, even though I feel like I've forgotten most of it. That's exactly the problem, my girl. You've lost a good part of your memory. It's going to be difficult, if not impossible, for you to become a doctor again unless you start all over again from the first year. It's going to be very complicated for me. My darling girl, when I see you, I'm so proud of you. You promised me you were going to make it and you did, truly and brilliantly. Everyone in the neighborhood respects me now. I'm the mother of a doctor. Soon, when you become a specialist, I'll be treated like a queen. You deserve it, Mom. I'm as proud of myself as you are, Mom, but try not to talk about it too much. Let's keep it modest and humble. What are you afraid of? I'm here to protect you from any danger until my last breath. Not even a hair on your head will be harmed. I defy anyone. You're not God, Mom. You don't even ask about my friend. Which friend are you talking about, from the witch who plucked out your star? I don't give a damn about her condition. If she wasn't sick, you wouldn't be elevated to the highest rank. She got what she deserved. Why are you so mean to that girl, Mom? Anyway, you're not God, she's better now. I can't believe it. I thought she was going to stay paralyzed on her bed forever. Go tie her up on her bed. Sometimes I just want to say you're a witch. You dare say that to my face? Have a nice day. So this girl woke up healthy, but she should die normally. If she dares to get in my daughter's way, this time I'll kill her. Happy arrival, sir. What can I do for you? I don't want anything, Grace. Do you know my name? I know you better than you know yourself. Listen, my daughter, 
the prophecy about your life will be fulfilled no matter what, but if you don't fight, you'll suffer and even die if you neglect yourself. Wake up from your sleep and go get your blessings. What a dream I just had. Wake up from your sleep and go get your blessings. What does God mean by that? I have to go and see the pastor in the morning. Dear pastor, this is the dream I had. Your dream is very clear, my daughter. You've ignored your destiny. After a prophecy, it must be accompanied by an act of faith. Instead of keeping your prophecy secret, you revealed it to human beings without even working on it. The devil used it to harm you. Don't forget that the Bible teaches us to trust only in the eternal. Your best friend can be the devil's gateway into your life. What do you mean by this? Who did you tell about your prophecies? Just my mother. Are you sure? My best friend. Don't tell me it was dangerous. It was the worst mistake you ever made. Thank God you weren't dead. You were going to die for free. Thank God for his grace. Your friend wasn't a bad person, but his mother was. She was the source of your misfortunes. Ah, uh, now I understand. Oh my God. Don't worry, you're already victorious. You've already lost eight years of medical school, but God has another plan for you. Make the effort to finish the law school you've just started. May God's will be done. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this news program, specially designed to introduce the candidates in this year's presidential elections. You probably know almost all the candidates, except for one who has just been added to the list. This is Miss Grace, the country's youngest lawyer and the first woman to stand for president of this country. Dear colleague, your mother's health is deteriorating by the day. He needs a kidney transplant. What can we do now, dear Dean? What is our next move? She has to have the transplant within the next 48 hours. Otherwise, you can assume that your mother is already dead. There's only 24 hours left, but I still haven't been able to find a donor for my mom's strike. How can I be a doctor and have my own mother die in my hand? I'm unable to save her. Oh God, I know she's never been a very good mother but don't let me down. Help me find a compatible donor. Not everyone who carries themselves willingly is a match. Even her own blood brothers won't help her. Kido, our sister is dying. We have to find a solution. But I can't. I'm too young to live with only one kidney. I don't want to die quickly. You can also donate. Do you see my age? Do you want to kill me? There's only four hours left. It's over, my mother's dying. Where are you sneaking off to? I need to do a quick run around town. Which race will you go on alone? You think you're still just a lawyer? Your safety is very important to your loved ones and to this entire nation. If anything bad happens to you, the people will be desperate. You're not just anyone anymore. You're about to become president of the Republic. I know, Mom, but what I want to do has to be anonymous. I don't want the media to report it on TV. You know I'm your number one confidant, right? I want you to involve me in your plan. I'm your mother and I'll be the only person defending you to the death. So I need to know everything about your personal plans. Okay, you win. By the way, I'd like to donate a kidney to my best friend Chantal's mom. Her mom is seriously ill and needs a kidney. But unfortunately, she hasn't been able to find a donor. What are you going to do about it? Do you think this is a good idea? After the donation, don't you know that you'll be fragile and that it'll be dangerous for your posture? Mom, before I pretended to be president, I was human, and I'm still human. I have a forgiving heart. My political ambitions are not above my religious faith, which obliges me to forgive and love my second-in-command as myself. I'd rather save a life and lose the election. I'm so glad you're staying true to yourself and your faith. I understand now why all the people are behind you. I am very convinced that you will be a very good leader. Let's go. I'll go with you to do the grafting. God will make everything go smoothly. Thank you, Mom, for your support. I'm your mom. You don't need to thank me for my motherly duty. 
We still don't have any positive feedback. All right, there's no hope. It's all over. Who is it? There's a lady who came for the donation. You've got to be kidding me. Yes, it is compatible. Thank goodness for that. Let's not waste time. Let's go quickly to the operating room for the graft. But there's a problem. Which one? The said woman is a prospective candidate in the upcoming presidential race. That's going to be complicated. Let's go and see her. Grace. Yes, Chantal, this is me. I've come about your mom's transplant. Are you sure you know what you want to do? You're not just anyone anymore and we can't afford to lose you. You could get us into a lot of trouble. Everyone stop being negative. I'll be fine. Do you know that there is still a risk of complications? I know, but do it. That's an order. All right then. Thank God you finally woke up. You almost left me. Thank you for all your care. If you weren't a doctor, maybe I was going to die. You have to thank the person who gave you one of his kidneys. Even as a doctor, none of us could have helped you without this kidney. Even your brothers and sisters weren't ready to help you. Most of the volunteers who came forward were not compatible with you. But who had given me this wonderful gift? The person is here, I'll call him for you. So it's you? That's me. I don't deserve what you've done for me. You risked your life to give me life. Stop getting so upset, Mom. I don't know why you think you don't deserve to live. My friend needs you. I want you to stay alive too. I almost took your life just because of my jealousy. I poisoned you so that my daughter could be in your place and benefit from all your graces. But here you are today, bringing me back to life. If you were dead, I'd be dead as we speak. Everything God does is good. He is the creator par excellence. When Jesus' disciples asked him this question, Rabia, who has sinned? This man or his parents? So that he was born blind? Jesus answered them, saying that it was not that the blind man or his parents had sinned, but it was so that the works of God might be made manifest in him. If you hadn't stopped me from finishing medical school, I might know how to become a doctor today, which would have missed God's plan for my life, which is to become an advocate for the voiceless and oppressed. Plus I have the grace to be loved by all the people, and if God permits, I would be the youngest president and the first Christian woman president in history. Future president? Yes. You see that everything contributes to the good of those who love God, don't you? He is the only one who writes straight with a cut line defying all human knowledge. Your God is wonderful. Please forgive me and pray to your God for me. You've since been forgiven. My God is merciful and loving. A week later the election was held. By God's grace, Grace was elected her country's first woman president. All the people loved her. Grace was an exemplary president and a believer who inspired the people in the way of the Lord. She had done the impossible, namely to be a good president and at the same time a good leader in Christ. During her reign there was peace and stability, both economically and socially. To conclude, I'd like to tell you that the best confidant we can have in life is Jesus. The Word of God tells us, don't believe a friend, don't trust an intimate. In front of her who rests on your breast, guard the doors of your mouth. It's not that Chantal was a bad friend, but thanks to her, her mothers who were under the devil's influence had been able to do harm. Fortunately, God being what he is, he hadn't allowed his servant to die. He had transformed the unfortunate situation from grace to good. Some may say that if grace had not had his misfortune, prophecy would not have been fulfilled. Maybe so, maybe not. I can't justify it, but what I do know is that there are cases like this where people unfortunately lose their lives without even being able to accomplish what they were created to do. Grace had the grace of God in his life, if I may use the tautology. If she were an unbeliever, she might not have that grace. We need to control our tongue. What has to happen will happen, but we mustn't leave the devil an open door. Otherwise, we'll suffer a lot before grace reaches us. On the other hand, 
you should know that a prophecy about our life is not yet a fulfillment. It requires a work of faith all around. You can't receive a prophecy and go home resting on your laurels. It takes a lot of prayer and faith. We've come to the end of this animation. I'd like to invite you to write your impressions and inspirations in the comments. Don't forget that your comments can edify someone. Subscribe and don't forget to like and share our videos. It can save a soul. May God bless you all. Bye for now.